and welcome back once again for Computer Concepts Module 3 Computer Hardware. This is part two. We've covered part 1A. We've covered part 1B and let's jump into part two. So in part two, we're going to look in greater detail as to input devices, output devices. This has changed in computing even in recent years. And then of course, how to install computer hardware. So pretty interesting topics. As we talk about input devices, <laughs> of course, our primary input device is a keyboard. Still today, used on desktops, laptops, mobile devices. I want to give you more information on the keyboard. So when we talk about utilizing them on desktops, they tend to be one of two things. They're definitely a peripheral device. They're definitely the primary input device of the computer today. And we see them in wired or wireless. Today, the wireless technology tends to be Bluetooth, okay, where wired is USB. We can use keyboards, by the way, on laptops. We normally see them embedded into the laptop, but we could use a peripheral keyboard uh, such as USB or Bluetooth to have more feature and functionality within a keyboard on our laptop. And then mobile devices we tend to see on screen. So here's an example over here. You know, again, laptops can have a touch screen or on screen keyboard that we can use. We see those on two in ones. We see them on tablets and we definitely see them on our smartphones. Okay. Other input devices, pointing devices like, you know, here's my pointer over here pointing you to the touchpad. So on a laptop, we utilize a touchpad. I'll use mine right now to move the pointer. And then of course, by giving that pointer commands, okay, like right click, if we right click, let me give you an example here. It will say what we can do. For example, I could right click and advance the screen or my slide or go to the previous slide. Okay. Or I can left click and thus perform a function, double clicking on an icon, for example, to open a program. If you're not really into mice, you're not into trackpads, you might like a trackball. There's a little example down here where the ball it's inverted. Okay. Old mice used to have balls on the bottom. It's an X, Y axis. As we move, it moves X, Y axis on the screen so that the computer always knows where the pointing device is. It knows what it's over. So when we do a left click, it knows what action to perform. Okay. Today though, these tend to be, you know, with a, um, oh goodness, a light. I'm sorry. I'm losing my train of thought on the bottom. Okay. That takes the place of the ball, but Real quick, back to trackballs. We see these used a lot by gamers. We see them used a lot by designers, people that are on their computer a lot. They tend to have more buttons and features and functionalities that they can use. We've talked about touch screens, you know, multi-touch screens, you know, can respond mostly to fingertips. We see this, for example, in a touchpad where if we do two fingers and make them wider, you see what happens to the screen as I do that. So we can use those technologies as well. Other input devices today, especially with two in ones or digital tablets, we have a pen input. That's where we can literally write on the screen. Now, great use of this that I use. I have a Microsoft surface and I use that to write on the screen, to literally take notes, if you will, on the screen using a digital pen. And those can actually be converted into text within like a program like Microsoft Notes, for example, or I can circle things on the screen. I'll try to do that in a subsequent video so you can see what that's like. Microphones now are a huge input device. I'm using one right now to input my voice, my audio as the audio track for this video. I can also use it, by the way, to interface with computing devices such as my Google Home. I can say, okay, G. I don't want to say the whole thing because my phone's right here and it'll say, Hey Eric, how can I help? I can use it on my smartphone. I can use it with Siri. I can use it with Cortana. I think it, yeah, Cortana, Windows version, etc. Cameras, whether they be digital cameras to input photos or webcams to input audio and video, that can also be used for input. So for example, I know y'all don't want to see my ugly mug, but I could turn on my camera within my recording system. I use a recording system called Camtasia and put my picture down here so you could see me as I talk. 
Uh, scanners, another great example. So when we talk about scanners, remember that there is an all-in-one peripheral device that's pretty common in homes and in businesses today that prints, scans, does both flatbed scanning like this, as well as sheet feed scanning. It can be a fax and it can be a copier, okay? But when we talk about customized or specialized peripheral devices like this flatbed scanner here, we would tend to buy one of these because we're gonna get better quality because the manufacturer is focused only on the technology needing for scan. We can do 3D scanners that will scan stuff. We can do the 2D as you see here. We can get a higher quality by scanning pictures uh, into digital formats. Game controllers, let's not leave the gamers out. Game controllers used for playing video games a lot. By the way, you'll even see, you know, that uh, joysticks can be used as pointing devices sometimes. So that can be fun for those gamers. But, you know, joystick, handheld, vertical, you know, you can see all the different buttons. This one might represent uh, flying a helicopter or an aviation simulation software. You've got game pads, you know, for Dance Dance Revolution, bringing that to your house, a dance pad, I should say. We've got game pads or game controllers, as they're also called, where we have a lot of different buttons to do a lot of different things within our video games. And then, of course, let's not forget motion sensing controllers like the Xbox Connect, where as we move, it picks up that motion and does things within the video game just based on the motion that we create. And of course, we see a lot of those used in the new virtual reality uh, market, you know, with our optics and then being able to move our hands to do things based on what we're seeing in VR. And we talked about VR previously in a previous module. Other output devices, speakers, of course. Sorry that this text is so small. Uh, speakers are a great example. Headphones, now remember headphones have both speakers as well as this one has a microphone. So in this case, this apparatus here, a peripheral device, most likely is gonna connect either wirelessly or wired to our computer, usually USB or Bluetooth, and it's gonna give both input via the microphone and output via the speakers within the headphones or earbuds, okay? Printer, of course, there's a great example of the all-in-one we were talking about. It's a printer, it's a copier uh, via the um, flatbed here. We can load many documents and sheet feed many documents to scan them, for example. A lot of these allow us to put in customized papers so that we can literally print photos uh, that we can hang on walls or do things with. And then of course, believe it or not, there's still a fax machine where if we have a landline coming into our house, we can fax. And now there's fax technologies built in by HP where a fax will come in through the internet. So we can connect it through the internet and not have that expense of a LAN connection, a local connection to it. Projectors are a great example. I'll give you an idea of a top vision small projector here where we're utilizing a, a smartphone, okay, via USB 3 or, you know, whatever connection your smartphone has directly into the projector, making the projector use. So suddenly I don't need to take my laptop to go give presentations. I can literally do everything off of my smartphone. So realize that I could be running this PowerPoint off my smartphone onto a projector and teach a class. <laughs> Finally, there's voice synthesization. Um, notice in the background of this, you'll see a voice synthesizer. Converts text to speech. So these are built into things like our, um, our smartphones where we can talk and it can become text. They're also used for changing the modulation, you know, to making me sound like this if I was using a voice synthesizer. I just did that with my voice, by the way. <laughs> Finally, how to install computer hardware. There's some key things we need to know here. I don't want to go into the whole deal. Folks, if you're not an expert, if you're not familiar with opening up your laptop, opening up your smartphone, don't do it. Go to the experts, make sure that they do it. That way they're responsible. If they break something, it definitely can be worthwhile. But if you're an enthusiast, go out and 
do the shopping, find parts that work together, find a motherboard and what CPUs are compatible. You'll save yourself a lot of money doing that, depending on the computer you're building. Gamers love to do it because they save a lot of money on high end computing. But as we do this, we need to make sure that we have an environment that is free from dust, free from clutter, um, moisture, temperature, etc. All the things that can commonly affect um, the quality or you know break a computer. For example, anytime I'm in the computer, just a little static electricity in the right place could literally render that computer unusable. So I make sure to ground myself thoroughly so that a static discharge from my body does not ruin memory, for example, within a computer. We want to you know, check all the necessary components, um, ensure they're free from damage. You know, It used to be one of the big challenges was when we put in a processor, it had hundreds of little pins. And so as we put it in the ZIF socket, we had to put it in just perfectly. And if we bent or broke just one of those pins, it actually would render that processor unusable. Today, there, um, there's no pins. There's just flat areas that connect with compression areas within the socket that make it much easier and much more reliable to, say, insert a processor. With a desktop, we can update the processor easily. We can update our peripherals. We can update the memory. Um, whereas with mobile devices, it's not that easy to do, okay? You know, turn on the computer, follow the steps. When we talk about peripherals that are plug and play, we have to make sure we get a peripheral device that works with our operating system, okay? So if we're talking about a printer, today most printers that you buy are gonna have drivers for Mac and have drivers for Windows. But we wanna make sure that they have the proper driver for our operating system, which we previously talked about. Windows, Mac, Linux, etc. In order for that device to work, it needs a device driver. That is a piece of software, folks, that is installed into the operating system, letting the operating system know that connected to it is a peripheral device that I'm gonna engage and use within the operating system. All right, that's it for part two. Next time we'll cover part three. Let's quickly look at the outcomes for part three. We'll cover performance of computer hardware. We'll get into more detail of what it means you know, for a CPU to be of quality. We'll look at troubleshooting problems with hardware, steps to maintain in a computer, and explain how to restore. Now, that's what we'll discuss, and I will see you next time.